So I wasted about 4 to 5 billion isk on rigs for the Stratius. I tried to make one of the new builds, but it really didn't uh, go according to plan. Now I say wasted because the ship did not perform the way I imagined that it would. The performance wasn't definitely bad, but it didn't go up to my standards. It would definitely work for a lot of players, but I imagined something else and the, the build just didn't live up to my expectations. So I uh, guess I am back to square one. Now uh, I have 73.31 meter scan radius with, with the current build and I actually did pull out the rigs so that I can work uh, on them when I uh, when I have a good uh, new idea. But this is with the old build. Now uh, I had about 76 meter scan radius with the blue scanner with much more expensive rigs. So yeah, that by itself was a big fail because my idea was to make the scanner better than it already is, but I ended up making it worse somehow. So yeah, the other fail, uh, I didn't use the rigs that I wanted to use. I accidentally replaced auxiliary thrusters with warp crop mothers and you know, you can't stack warp crop mothers, you will still get the same effect. That means if, if you have like 9 or 8 stacks of warp crop optimizer 3, the total step you get will be 3 uh, within the integration and that was a big mistake that I did. Uh, you might be wondering, well, why did you use warp crop mothers instead of auxiliary thrusters? Well, Let's say I was building the ship at 3 a.m. while I was very sleepy, so instead of buying auxiliary starters, I bought stabs. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, bought them by accident and I integrated them by accident. So, yeah, that was uh, the little story about my attempts to change the build on the starters, but I'll definitely come up with uh, something new and I'm definitely not going to give up on the idea that I have with this ship. So, today I'll be doing some exploration and some PvP with this ship. Now the original idea behind the Stratios was to make it capable to survive in unknown space for a very long time and the idea was to make the Stratios capable of both PvP and PvE. Now the PvP performance of this ship is really good so far, uh, I like it. There are of course ships that I can take on with the Stratus, ships that have a very good tank for example are not really uh, that easy to crack open uh, with the Stratus. For such ships I like to use something else, but for the vast majority of ships the Stratus does do a very good job. So the target today, the, the target that uh, I have will be a Talos. Now, with the Stratius I really like to hunt Bella cruisers and battleships, especially snipers, preferably snipers, since the brawler builds can easily track the Stratius at zero, but this thing is a monster when it comes to stealth and when it comes to surprise attacks on snipers. So we have a Talos that is about 93 kilometers from the station and of course have a very good warping they are not aligned, and I'm slowly approaching and decloaking, scrambled, webbed, focusing far. Now they're trying to warp away, but that's not going to work probably, since I have 3 scrambles, 12 points on them. And by the looks of it, the Talos doesn't have any tank, and that means that this ship is only a sniper without any tank or even without any propulsion module. There we go, the Talos has been blown up, some decent loot, let me warp out and I can immediately cloak since I haven't been locked by anyone. So the idea with the build was to make the status capable of both exploration and PvP. 
Now the current build that I have does kind of cover both, but I'm not really uh, covering all of the stats of the ship the way I wanted them to be covered, so that's uh, one of the main reasons why I want to change the build. And it has to be able to survive, uh, do PvE and PvP in unknown space, so having out of practice is definitely going to help me uh, in making the right choice for the Stratus, and this was a very nice kill. 645 million is that was kind of a juicy talus, to be honest. And now let's go to some uh, exploration. Now, there is a lot of reasons why I am talking about unknown space. Uh, there is a lot of warp drive active. deep null systems that I plan to visit. There is also actual unknown space that I also plan to visit in the future. And the Stratios seems to be the ideal ship for it. Now, if Astro had a fourth medium slot, I would definitely use the Astro over the Stratios. The main reason why I have the Stratios as my primary ship now, as my primary exploration ship and basically primary core tops, is the fact that it has four medium slots. With the four medium slots, you can easily uh, fit a extra red scanner, a scrambler or any other module that you might find useful. In low sec and in other uh, dangerous unknown systems and null systems, uh, you can rely on the red scanner a lot because the, the red scanner does help you see things that are around you, even if you don't have any visual on them. Now, of course, there are ships that can be cloaked, and if the ship is cloaked, then there's other means on uh, trying to figure out, on figuring out where they might be. One of the things that you have to look out for are stations. If there is a station, and if you have a couple in local, then you can check out the station and see if they are docked. And then you can return to the site and basically scan every 15 seconds. If someone undocks, you will see them on the scanner very easily. So that is uh, one of the ways on uh, keeping your ship safe while doing exploration. With the Astro, you can't do that because the Astro doesn't have a extra fourth medium slot. If it had, I would probably use the same build. Uh, so that's also one of the of the advantages over the over the Astro if you're using the status. Now, of course, in the end you should rely on uh, your own skill. That means if you spot a neutral and local cloak immediately, because they can also they can also cloak, scan and cloak, or cloak and scan. You have a limited time interval between cloaking and using any other module. You can actually first click on a cloaking device and then on the micro warp drive or any other module it will run one full cycle which is a very good survival tactic so just to be safe always uh, cloak when something pops in local especially if you are far away or if you are in unknown space or enemy space or you know in some very very deep no sec regions that's where you want to rely on uh, the skills because skills will keep you alive now so far the exploration's been really good uh, i am very happy to say that i'm seeing a lot of other explorers in space now, i had something very funny happen to me uh, i actually spotted about seven or eight stratus cruisers within uh within this uh, video while while recording and all of them had the exact same nanocore and their ship looked exactly the same as my ship. Not really sure if that's a coincidence, but that was kind of funny. And also, something weird happened. It's been happening quite, uh, quite often lately. The price of Sister of Eve ships, and the price of the exploration frigates, the price of some covertops cruisers, and the price of the cloaking device, all that went up. 
I don't know what's going on, but something is being foreshadowed here, not really sure what, but someone knows something they should not know and they are manipulating the market, I would say. I don't know, uh, just what I can tell you from observation on, uh, on what's uh, going on. I mean, the Stratos used to be like 1.5 to 2 billion, now the Stratos cost 3 billion. The Nestor used to cost 5 billion, now it's 11 billion. Interesting. Interesting, isn't it? How, how that happens. How that happens. I also looked at the exploration frigates, the tier 10 ones, and they also have went up in price a little bit. The Heron and the Probe definitely went up in price, while the other two are about the same. A minor improvement in the, in the price. Warp drive active. Okay, let's go to the next one. I was just figured out my voice started to to slowly kick the bucket. Ah, there we go. It will probably repair itself, hopefully, throughout the video. No, oh, we have one blood remain box. I have been asked many times, what is my uh, favorite space to do exploration in? Now my alliance is currently owning Sansha and Angel, I believe. I haven't seen any Blood Raider one, but my favorite space for exploration is definitely Blood Raider. Uh, because from my personal experience, I'm doing exploration for like three, f two, two or three years now, I have been through a lot of different regions and to date, the most isk I found was in Blood Raider space. I found maybe like, I say, on average, the the lower average, about 60 billion isk from uh, exploring in uh, Blood Raider space. That's just you know the the lowest estimate. The actual estimate or the more accurate estimate would be about 90 to 100 billion, but I I, I usually uh, take the lower estimate because I. Um, when I say 90 billion, a lot of pl players just don't believe me. Although uh, at the time I used to have ships that uh, that were w worth like 60 billion isk in uh, in rigs and modules. So yeah, that's kind of funny. But but yeah, uh, about uh, th about that number. Now recently, uh, since I moved in in Deep Null, I have been doing a lot of Sansha and a lot of Angel sites. I would say angel sites do have a very nice potential. They do drop some very nice chips. If you if you find the data sites, you can find some very nice chips. However, Sancha space did feel like it was a bit more generous to what it was giving. I was very uh, easy to um, very quick and easy to match the east curve that I got from Sancha uh, to match the angel exploration realms that I had. So. That's also one very interesting uh, thing. So if I, if I have to like uh, rate the um, the space for exploration from best to worst. Now there is no best and there is no worst. Uh, this is entirely based on my experience and from what I have uh, encountered in the last two, three years of doing exploration. The first one would obviously be Blood Raider Space, just because of my history with it and just because of how much ISK I managed to pull out of it. Uh, the second one would be Sansha Space, very similar to Blood Raider Space, you can get some very good stuff out of that place. And definitely uh, good sites that are worth running. The third one would be Serpentis Space. Up until recently I would actually rate Serpentis to be the second, but they kind of, I don't know, seem to be almost exactly the same to Sancha space, but from Sancha I managed to uh, get a bit more isk than from Serpenti space. Of course that might change down the road, but at the moment Serpentis is on the third place, however if, if I can place both at the second place I will, so both of them are kind of on the second place. It really depends on uh, what the 
future brings when I do exploration in Serpentis space again. And the last one would be Angel Space, mostly because I just started to run the Angel Space more extensively, although I did uh, explore Angel Space even before, and it was good, but it never really gave me uh, as much ISK as some of the other regions, so the Angel Space would definitely be the, the last on uh, my list for uh, for the exploration ranking, but that, that doesn't mean that, ex that uh, Angel Space is bad. I definitely managed to get some very nice loot. I mean, I managed to pull out like I don't know, maybe seven, eight billion by now from from the exploration rooms, and still have to hold back some of the items that I that I got there. So there's definitely more things to be found there, and I'm definitely looking forward to see what uh, will happen now. There is one Stratos in local. I m I did uh, spot the the pallets on one of the previous gates. And that is one of the Stratius cruisers that look exactly the same as my ship. Exact same nanocore, exact same color option. They even matched the the little bit of red th that I have on the ship. So yeah, very nice to to find uh, ships that replicate my ship. Which means that they they might have a tank build, most likely a tank build, and most likely doing exploration since I haven't uh, haven't seen them using the scanner and usually in this space where I'm currently at there is no PvP, PvP doesn't really happen that often in this space, it's usually a space where players go to do exploration and I think I made this region a bit too popular <laughs> recently and lately which means uh, I'll bring PvP to this little uh, to this little region uh, since I do plan to camp exploration sites with the Stratus and I'll do that very very soon. It just so much happened that uh, that basically uh, kind of made me to change my build for for the upcoming uh, for the upcoming things that are going to be released to the game. And in order to uh, be up to date, I definitely have to change the build on this thing because it is going to be very interesting on what's the next thing coming to the game. So, and not only on the Stratus, I mean, I do plan to have multiple ships for the purpose. Not only the Stratus, but I, fi I feel like the Stratus does kind of seem the best since I already have a lot of, at, at least the best for me since I already Warp have like a lot of experience with uh, with cover top ships. After all, my first serious cover, uh, PvP ship was a cover top, so uh, I did learn a lot on these on these ships. Well, then, so since I believe that this pilot is uh, going to run the site here, I'll just quickly go change my build, and I will go. There is no one on scan will also be interesting to find out if the station is cl clear. Also beautiful space, a Docking moon and a accepted. planet. That is always a beautiful sight. I, I need to find all of these beautiful systems that can be used as some good scenery for the background. Alright, I equipped a scrambler and let's go back to the site. So let's see what happens. Hopefully they are Warp drive active. going to go and attempt to run the site. I'm definitely going to engage. I have the bombs equipped. The Stratus is ready for action. I will have the element of surprise, probably, probably not, because since they have the same exact Stratus as my ship, I would say they know, uh, they know, they know who I am. So I will probably be expected if uh, if they are running the site. But they're they're not running the site. It's clear so far, and they left. Oh well. Let's just continue and let's get the last box. I honestly expected I'm um, perhaps they actually went in the site and perhaps they have been around, but they wouldn't want to run the site with me local, which is a smart decision. I am always always ready to to blow up some ships. Even if I don't look like it. Well, when I say I don't look like it, even if my ship is is for PVE, it is still ready to blow up some players easily. 
however, I still feel like I have to do a lot of work on the status. This is the thing, uh, I'm mostly happy about my builds, but at the same time, in a lot of ways, uh, I'm also not really entirely satisfied with, uh, with the build. Since I always know that Autopilot I can engaged. do better, and I always find something that kind of, uh, kind of, you know, uh, makes me reconsider the Warp build drive that I have. Active. There's always something that can be improved, and this is how I did manage to come up with some of the builds that are, to this day, really good and that it still worked drive really active. well, like three years later down the road. The Ashmo build still holds up to this day really well, although the ship doesn't hold out because uh, of stabs, although that Ashmo that I used to have was unbeatable. Uh, that ship was one of the only ships that literally was undefeated. It went down when I yeeted it at gate guns when I decided to sell it. But yeah, that ship remains remains undefeated, basically. Stabs ruined the Ashmo, and unfortunately, I don't see a lot of Ashmo cruisers around anymore. The ship is outdated, but the build on it isn't, because in a close environment, where stabs have no use, the Ash that Ashmo wins 99.99% of battles, because that's just how good it is. It's just a very good build and very good ship to go along with it. The second one would be the build that I have on the Revelation that survived DPS that it wasn't rated for, which just proves how good the build is. Never, never rated the Revelation from one million DPS. It survived one over one million DPS, and I'm very happy with it. Now as for the statues, I used to have some builds for it, uh, for it, but. Uh, they were tank builds. The tank build on the Stratus is definitely uh, very good uh, and in most cases I think for, a w for the future of this ship's journey I might swap back to a tank build because for, for what I plan to use this ship I, I think tank is going to be more important than DPS. But that is also kind of debatable. But a very good tank is definitely going to be a very interesting uh, option for the status. I mean, it already has some pretty good drone DPS. I have drone bombs, but there is something about the status being a tank that just really shines on this ship. And I, I loved the tank in status. It's a it's a fantastic ship, an amazing ship. So perhaps I might return to uh, to that build, or perhaps I might just go and buy a totally fresh and totally new status, and then make that status a tank status. Meanwhile, this one can remain a DPS, which will cost again uh, a lot since the status is currently going up in price. So preferably, I still want to use the same ship but with a changed build so that I can easily do the stuff that I plan to do with this thing and I don't mean just uh, any tank, I, I do really plan to make it really tanky, extremely tanky, a, a very big chunk since I feel like it is kind of required that I do that a very good tank will always beat high DPS and with the status with the way I imagined it, it would definitely work really well as a as a tank. It already has a very good track record with being a tank, so might go and uh, proceed with the tank build. So I still have to decide that. Thankfully, I didn't. Uh, I I bought the the combat integrations, but I haven't uh, equipped them yet since I figured out that I messed up a lot with the engineering rigs so I definitely uh, will think the the builds over a couple times just so I get to the best possible conclusion about what type of builds I want to have on 
on the ship. But so far, I'm honestly uh, quite. I mean, I'm happy with it, but it can definitely be Autopilot better engaged. than it is. And I'm always focusing and always trying to make the best build possible, since, you know, that's just what I do. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this little run with the Stratius. Uh, just wanted to share the little updates on uh, on the new builds. Definitely didn't go as planned for the first time, but you know it's fine. Uh, I'll uh, I learned a lot from the from the previous build, and I know uh, where to uh, I know what to change, and I think I know what to improve. So I'm definitely going to keep you updated on the on this lovely build because it I I believe it's going to be very uh, let's say. Well, not not crucial, but going to be very re relevant for the for the very near future. So, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, play safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.